on. It's Tobias with Fresh Holistics. Today I'm going to talk about the essentials of fat regulation, specifically fat storage and fat liberation. I also want to touch on a fascinating concept of why the body stores fat in certain locations of the body and not others, and how an enzyme called LPL actually is responsible for driving fat into different locations of the body. Finally, I'll go over a little bit of health and lifestyle and why this relates to fat regulation. So some of you might be familiar with the concepts of blood sugar and insulin. Blood sugar is going to rise and insulin's job is to bring that blood sugar back down. Insulin is also responsible for the metabolism and storage of carbohydrates and fats. So these two are very important for fat regulation. So let's look at it. Um, blood sugar is going to be raised by two factors. The first one is food, which is carbohydrates and proteins specifically. Uh, blood sugar is also going to be raised in the presence of stress. The hormones cortisol and adrenaline are actually going to mobilize the blood sugar, therefore um, stimulating insulin so that it can bring it back down. So once this happens, fat storage starts to happen. Um, insulin is secreted. Insulin is responsible for stimulating LPL, the enzyme I mentioned earlier, which is called lipoprotein lipase, which actually breaks down triglycerides into free fatty acids so that they can get into the cell. In combination with glucose, uh, free fatty acids and glycerol create triglycerides or fat that is locked into the fat cell. This is the basic process of fat storage, also called lipogenesis. And like I said, LPL is highly responsible for where the fat goes on the body. So let's look at that. Uh, some common concepts that I want to go over is that LPL is dictated by sex. Men generally have more lipoprotein lipase above the waist, therefore storing most of their fat in the abdominal regions. Females generally have most of their lipoprotein lipase below the waist, therefore storing most of their fat in the hips, thighs, glutes areas. You may have seen this. Um, this is very common. It doesn't happen with every single individual. It's just a generality. Uh, another concept that we want to look at is sex. Our sex hormones and androgens uh, are actually going to inhibit lipoprotein lipase. Now, sex hormones are uh, highly correlated with cholesterol. So, without the right amounts of cholesterol, cholesterol acts as the precursor for all of these sex hormones. So, without it, um, it's going to be hard to have the right amounts to inhibit LPL. There, different physiological situations play a different role. One specifically is pregnancy. Females that become pregnant generally increase LPL um, to essentially increase the fat around the abdominals and increase the fat in the mammary glands so that the female can support the fetus during pregnancy and during lactation. So those are some basic components, uh, components of LPL and fat storage. Let's flip around and look at fat liberation, also called lipolysis. Uh, lipolysis is just the opposite. So when insulin is not present or the absence of insulin is occurring, HSL, the enzyme hormone sensitive lipase, is going to break down free fatty acids and glycerol into the bloodstream so that they can be utilized as energy. Now, to a certain extent, adrenaline is going to stimulate HSL as well. However, if we have too much stress or if the blood sugar is not being handled properly, we're going to get the secretion of insulin. LPL is going to come into play and then HSL will be inhibited and the fat cell, um, I'm sorry, triglyceride will be locked into the fat cell. So these are the general, um, this is a general outline of fat regulation. Let's try to take this information and look at some common lifestyle changes and nutritional information that we can, you know, go over and hopefully that you can use. So the first one, um, my first tip or recommendation would be that we need to start balancing our blood sugar with high quality fat. High quality fat is going to slow down absorption and increase um, the rate of digestion and make sure that we're not going into too many highs or lows with the blood sugar. So it's going to help balance the blood sugar. So by having a balanced meal with proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, uh, the ratio is going to be dependent on your biochemical individuality. 
but making sure that we have a balanced meal, making sure that we're including that fat is gonna help quite a bit. Secondly, most people are just consuming too many carbohydrates, too much processed, um, boxed, canned, wrapped, garbage essentially. They're negating the fact that most of our carbohydrates should be coming from fruits and vegetables. Uh, fruits and vegetables would be the optimal choice. It'll give us a good source of carbohydrates and a good source of other nutrition. Finally, we gotta look at balancing our lifestyle. I mean, if somebody has too much stress, whether it be you know circadian stress, physical stress, nutritional, thermal, chemical, uh, we gotta look at balancing that out and making sure that that's not the cause of uh, the blood sugar fluctuations, and you know that's not interfering with you know our our weight or fat regulation essentially. So, big tips: balance your blood sugar with high quality fat. Eat more fruits and vegetables, and that should be your primary source. And finally, balance your lifestyle or your stress. So, hope you learned something. If you want more information, check us out at freshholistics.com. Peace.